In this video, we will be discussing how to install the new Video Input Backglass Switchboard, or VIBS, for the Legends Pinball Micro. That is, the Micro requires this specific board, or kit, to be able to utilize the backglass with a PC or the Steam Deck. After we install the VIBS board, I'll demonstrate some brief gameplay from Pinball FX3, VPX, and Future Pinball from a Steam Deck. You can also use a PC, as the two operate exactly the same. There are already detailed guides, both video and written, and I'll place links below to help you with that. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I would like to thank At Games for sending this much anticipated VIBS board for the Legends Pinball Micro for guide development and review. If it wasn't for their kind support, I wouldn't be able to show you the setup before yours arrives. VIBS stands for the Video Input Backglass Switchboard and allows you to essentially toggle between showing content from the built in tables versus those from a PC or Steam Deck. Now let's go ahead and open the box and see what's included. First, we have the included instruction manual, which does a great job of stepping you through the installation process. This is the switch that will allow you to toggle between the built-in tables and a connected PC or Steam Deck for the back glass, a power extension cable, a power splitter, and there are four small screws for mounting the VIBS board. As mentioned, this board will only work in the Legends Pinball Micro and utilizes two primary connections, the FPC and LVDS connectors. Now let's move on to the installation. To get started with the installation, let's first power off the ALP Micro and go ahead and unplug the power to the machine. On the back of the back box, we want to remove the four screws here, 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 and here and put them somewhere safe so they don't get lost. Next, we'll disconnect the FPC and LVDS cable. For the LVDS cable, I found it easier to remove it by rocking the top and bottom with my index fingers. You don't want to pull on the cable to remove it. One of the pins could come loose or break off. For the FPC cable, gently flip the black tab on the connector upward. Then you can easily slide the FPC cable away from the connector. Now take the VIBS board and make sure the black tab on the FPC connector is already raised up and just check the orientation before installing. Now we'll take the four screws, position one into one of the top two holes on the VIBS board and screw it into the mount. Repeat for the remaining three screws. Now we'll slide the flat FPC cable into the connector and gently press down on the black tab from the top and bottom of the tab to lock the cable into place. You can use the existing electrical tape to tidy up the extra length. Now take the LVDS connector with the exposed pins to the left and gently slide it into the connector. Make sure it's fully seated into the VIBS board. This is how the cables should look when done. Note that the small board to the right is no longer being used. Moving over to the workbench, we'll now prepare the back panel for installation. Take the switch assembly and go ahead and remove the nut from the back of the switch and the wrap from the switch cable. Insert the switch from the side that has writing above the cutouts and then tighten the nut all the way to hold the switch into place. Be sure it is fully tight against the board. Place the bottom of the micro switch into the peg at the bottom of the switch and gently do the same for the top, pushing it slightly to the right to lock it into place. You can do a quick check here to make sure the button is pressing in properly to the micro switch. Next, we'll attach the two terminals to the switch. It doesn't matter which wire goes where, just make sure they are fully inserted. The other end will connect to the VIBS board. And you will also want an HDMI cable at this point. The one here is about six feet in length. We'll now plug in the power extension cable to the VIBS board and one end of the HDMI cable into the VIBS HDMI port. Bring the back panel nearby and plug in the VIBS switch button to the small connector at the top of the VIBS board. I'll then wrap some of the excess length of the power extension cable 
and feed the power and the other end of the HDMI cable through the pre-cut hole. Place the back panel into position and then reinstall the four screws to hold it into place. I use some extra leftover tape to provide a little extra stress relief on the HDMI cable. Now take the included power splitter and plug in the power extension cable and the power going to the power adapter and the power splitter into the Legends Pinball Micro. We can now power on the Micro. In the next segment, we'll check it out with the Steam Deck. On the back of the Micro, we have the USB or OTG cable connected, as well as the HDMI for the Playfield and HDMI for the VIBs that we just installed. You can certainly use a PC for this setup, but since the Steam Deck is much smaller, it makes sense for me to show it here. We have a single USB-C cable going to this dock. The dock supports power delivery to the Steam Deck, OTG connection for the buttons on the micro, and two HDMI ports. One is for the playfield, the other for the back glass. I also have a keyboard and mouse connected. There are extensive guides on everything I'm about to show you, so we won't delve too much into those details. However, there is a guide for using the Steam Deck with the Legends Pinball, which is the same setup for the Micro. There are three additional guides to support installing Windows to a Micro SD card on the Steam Deck, Pinball FX3 setup, and Pinup Popper Baller Installer, which is used for Future Pinball and Visual Pinball X. To switch to a PC or Steam Deck, simply press the channel button at the top panel. Set the control mode to OTG, display to main display, and degree to 90. Select the OK button and press the play button at the front. You'll then see the Windows display on the play field, but you'll need to press the VIB switch to switch the back glass input. Very briefly, I have the main play field set up as display number 2 on the left, the back glass in the middle, and the Steam Deck display on the far right. I'm also using Joy to Key. If you prefer mapping the buttons directly in each of the pinball applications, you certainly can. Totally up to you. Now that everything is set up, let's check out some brief gameplay. <laughs> One of my favorite tables for Pinball FX3 is Family Guy. Here's a fun fact. The code name for the original Viv's board was Rachel. That was one of the main characters in the original release of Blade Runner. And of course, the very popular Elvira. Whether you decide to connect a PC or Steam Deck to your Legends Pinball Micro, the VIPS for Legends Pinball Micro is a must-have accessory if you want to utilize the back glass for the tables. I like that at games included cutouts on the back panel already to support it, and the installation was fairly easy. The full setup shown here is also in the written guide. 
See below for a link if interested. What do you think about the vids for the Legends Pinball Micro? Comment below, it would be great to hear what you think. Thank you so much for watching and for your support of this channel. I look forward to talking with you again very soon.